Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on creating axonometric drawings in Rhino. We're going to be working with this 3D model of this tower block here and I'm going to quickly go through the difference between different types of projection within Rhino. By default you should have had your view set up to a perspective projection which means it kind of matches a real world camera settings when you're looking at your 3D model. And I've kind of done some make 2Ds here so we can see the difference between them. So this is a perspective projection. This is a parallel projection, which you can set up in your settings on your viewport here. And this is usually served for section or plan drawings or any drawings which you want flattened out. They have no perspective on the camera angle and you can angle the model to have this kind of parallel projection look. Now, axonometric is different in the fact that it won't exist within a 3D viewport setting. So you can't have a look at your model within axonometric projection. The reason for this is axonometric is actually a 2D drawing way of representing a 3D model. We can't physically view a model in axonometric projection, but we can create a 2D drawing that will represent our model within that projection, which is what we're going to go through today. You'll notice that all the measurements on an axonometric drawing should be exact to what your drawing actually is. So you can keep an axo drawing to scale and it will hold that scale even in 3D. Now, to create an axonometric drawing, we're going to start with our 3D model here. And it doesn't matter if we're in perspective or parallel projection for this task. What we're going to do, though, is to make axo drawings, you have to first skew and break your model. So whenever you want to create a drawing or an axonometric drawing from your 3D model, I recommend you copy it because the actions we're going to be doing to turn it into this axonometric projection will leave it uneditable and a lot harder to work with once we've gone through the steps. So I've just copied the model over, so we've got a duplicate of the model. Now, going back to our top view here, we're going to locate our model. I'm just going to move it over. And we're just going to rotate this model by 45 degrees. It could be minus 45 or 45, depending on the angle you want, but it's sort of up to you there. And that will give us that kind of trademark AXO look of having your model on this 45 degree angle, how you sort of usually see it represented. So we rotate our model 45 degrees. Then up in the right view or the top view, sort of whichever one's easiest to see, we'll do it in the front view here. Now, we're going to locate our model and we're going to use the command shear just by typing in shear at the top there, hit enter, and then we're going to choose a point at the base of our model, and then we're going to choose another point directly above that base. Now it doesn't matter if it's really high above or really low, as long as it's directly above the model, that's all that matters for this. Now once you choose that, you'll see that if you move your mouse, you'll start to really kind of shear the model left or right, which will kind of take the geometry and angle it and pull it to the left or right hand side, depending on the view you're in. We're not going to do this manually, we're actually just going to now type in minus 45 to shear the model by minus 45 degrees, which basically pulls the model back on itself by minus 45 degrees. And once you've done that, just hit enter to shear it by that angle. Now if we back out of this front view and look back in the top view, you'll see now that the model has been stretched out and we're getting that axo angle, but currently it's at kind of 90 degrees flip, so we just want to take it and rotate it by 90 degrees to bring it back round. And there you can see that the model is now in that AXO projection. If you have a look at it in 3D, you'll see that the model has actually been completely skewed, and this is what I meant by the, the fact that doing this action will kind of ruin your model and it will make it a lot harder to work with from this point onwards. So always make a copy of the model before you do this process. So it's kind of actually physically sheared the geometry back on itself. Now I'll go back in the top view, and if you want to make a drawing from this, all we then have to do is within the top view, we just select the model, and we're just going to do a make 2D view of that. For this particular drawing, I'm going to, as well as maintaining my source layers, which I always recommend you do when doing a make 2D, I'm also going to keep the scene silhouette on, and I'll go through the reasons why for this after I do the make 2D. So we'll just hit OK and we'll let that turn into a 2D drawing. That drawing is now complete, so I'll go over here and locate that drawing. And we'll just move it over to the front here. 
and you now see we now have our axonometric drawing of our 3D model. Now what I'm also going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to quickly go over how to turn this into a sort of line weighted drawing as well. If you haven't previously, please go back and watch my video on line weights and that will sort of make sense of the line weights I've already set up within this file. And we've got this 2D line work folder here and that video goes through each of these line weights and why they're set to the weight they are. So we're going to turn that on. And you'll see because I maintained my source layers in my make 2D folder down the bottom, we'll have our curves, which are our kind of curves or our sort of main geometry of our model. And we also have this new folder called scene silhouette which is the one we sort of ticked in the Make 2D option, which I find is quite useful for axonometric views because it gives you a really nice outline of your model, this particular view. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to first start by taking the outline. And I'm just going to move this on to our 2D line work, to our section thick line, which is our thickest line weight, almost as if we're going to kind of have a thick line weight that goes around the whole model there. So I'm going to move that over to that layer. Now we're going to turn that off and we're going to turn on our curves model. And for the rest of these, I think we're going to, let's open these up. And I'm going to select my external walls. We'll put these on my elevation layer. So they're going to be a sort of thinner, slimmer line weight. And we'll do them on, um, let's just do them on an elevation mid for now. There. And I'm just going to go through and put each of my lines on their correct line weight layer. I think the windows, we're going to make a slightly thinner line weight. So when we select these, I'm going to drop these on my elevation thin. So they're slightly slimmer because they're a bit more detailed than the rest of the geometry. And for the ground, so these kind of topography maps, I sort of want it to be a dashed line. So I'm going to put it for now, we'll put it on the annotation line. But I might change that as we go because it's more of a sort of annotating the um, particular ground plane we have here. So that's on annotation now. And if you have any more lines in there, so let's turn off the scene silhouette and the line work. For the rest of these, I'm just going to move these on to elevation mid as well because we're looking at this model in elevation. So that's fine. So you see now I've got nothing in this make 2D folder, so we can hide that folder. Make sure you're kind of on a default layer, and we can turn on our one, and we have everything correctly line weighted now. And if we want to have a look and see what those line weights appear up as, we can make a new layout page there. And we'll just call this Axe Overview, and let's locate our new Axe drawing here, and then to have a look and see what these line weights look like. Make sure you turn on your print display, state to on, and there we go. You can see our AXO drawing complete with our nice scene outline to give the kind of bold outline on the drawing and our dashed line for our annotation or our kind of topography layers as well. And it might be that I might want to kind of play around with these particular lines. Maybe I want a dotted line for that topography layer and I want it to be a bit lighter grey as well so we can kind of work with that as well to sort of change the outlook and if we want this to sort of appear slightly differently within the drawing it might be as well that that elevation line is quite thick and we want it to be a bit slimmer so I might turn that down to a 0.13 as well. But there you have it so that was a very quick video tutorial on creating an AXO drawing from a 3D model and then line weighting this in Rhino layout page. When you're happy with that you can just right click on your drawing go to print and print it out as a PDF there and you'll have a PDF version of your axonometric drawing to colour up in Illustrator or Photoshop. Thank you for watching and if you want to find any more videos on line weighting or 2D drawing techniques within Rhino please sure to check out the channel. Thank you very much.